the others in the boat could not feel the anguish that was burning in the mind of the destroyer. They thought that he was so embarrassed because the boat was caught in the storm. The great exterminator was known for his unsurpassed courage. Seeing that he himself was so distraught, panic entered the minds of the others as well. Everyone was thinking of survival strategies, wondering when the boat would capsize. At last the boat, after a long tossing and tossing, approached the shore, half an ear to the east of the landing place. Don't worry anymore everyone breathed a sigh of relief. At that time, one of the trees that was being swayed by the stormy wind on the river bank broke and fell. The wind carried the broken tree and dropped it in the water near the boat. The rowers tried hard to turn the boat and steer it across. Didn't work. The tree came very fast and hit the boat. The boat capsized with a tuttle. The next moment all the people in the boat fell into the water and floated away. All the others were thinking of surviving the capsize of the boat, and were somewhat prepared to deal with the danger when it actually happened. As the boat approached the shore, some swam to the shore. Some were clinging to trees. Some were floating in the water holding the catch in their hands. But the wrecker was preoccupied with other thoughts and never expected the accident to the boat. He drowned in the water when the boat overturned. The speed of the movement carried him far. After drinking water a few times, getting water in his nose and ears, stumbling and stumbling at last somehow he managed to get to the top of the stream and he did not see the boat, no one on the boat was found. Immediately, the old wisdom rose in the old man's heart. The great warrior, who had bravely fought and won many battles in the most dangerous conditions, decided to fight and win even with the flood of this fort. He looked around. He grabbed hold of a log that had just floated by. Marked the shore and started swimming. With the speed of the flood and the speed of the storm, he swam while struggling in the same time. He simply floated for a while when his arm got tired. When he tried to climb the river bank many times, the muddy bank due to rain pushed him back into the river. Immediately he jumped and grabbed the log that he had left. After struggling like this for more than a jamet after dark, his feet touched the ground at a place where reeds grew knee-deep in the river bed. Then, with the help of bent reeds, the girl stumbled and finally climbed ashore. Kanan Thakaram surrounded him. There does not seem to be any village nearby. It seemed to have come about one and a half years to the east of Odaythura, where we had to go ashore in front of Tirumalayatu. Yes, yes. They must have disembarked near the town of Kudentai. Can you somehow get the baby to town tonight? The storm had just then reached its full intensity in the area. The roar of a hundred thousand demons was deafening. Trees snapped and fell dead and there were frequent thunders in the sky like the explosion of cosmic seagulls. Heavy rain poured down. A dilapidated mandapam or an old temple somewhere. It is necessary to stay there and spend the night. He decided that he should start walking up only after dawn, and he walked along the river bank on his shaky legs. The river was overflowing and touching the banks. As it rained there was some water above the bank. Not to mention the darkness. So, as the brave old man walked, he did not pay much attention to the fact that a little water was flowing across the river bank in front of him. Suddenly the water was knee-deep and he hesitated and thought. He was startled when the water came up to his thigh. There was no time to think beyond that. The next moment he fell headlong into the water. The flood, which had broken the bank of the fort and flowed southward at that place, swept him over and over. Beyond the bank was a deep depression, which seemed to sweep him deeper and deeper into its abyss. When the boat overturned and drowned in the flood going down the river, he managed with some ease. Now that is not possible. He was rolling, 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 down and down. The eye is not visible, I can't hear. Couldn't even stand up straight and suffocated. Some terrible giant pressed him into the water, turned him upside down, and dragged him to the underworld at the same time. Ah, that giant is none other than that. It was the Rakshasa who was the flood that broke through the breach and broke through the breach. Can you survive the terrifying roll from his grotesque grip? Feet on the ground? Nothing to get hold of? Suffocating? 
Is it like screwing the neck? The ear is deaf. Durga Parm's wary. Goddess. Will I survive this accident? Sinner Nandini. Look at what happened to me because of you. Alas. Pity. Did I leave you in the midst of those duders? See you. Enchanted by your beauty, pitted by your condition, what pleasure did I find in marrying you? What did I experience other than the loss of peace of mind? In the end, I'm going to get caught in such a robbery and suffocate to death. Not even Virakal Ne type school army is going to bury my body carrying 64 war wounds. No one is even going to find my body. I'm going to be buried in the mud in a pit somewhere. My fate is going to go away without anyone even knowing what happened. Or else this flood will take my body to the shore. Dogs and foxes are snatching and eating and going hungry. Within a few minutes, many such thoughts appeared and disappeared in Pulavetare's mind. Then suddenly he lost consciousness. Something hit him in the head and he remembered a little. The hands were grasping something, black stone, hard ground. Some force brought him up and propelled him. He also used what little strength he had left and jumped up with his arms crossed. Another moment, he was lying on the hard black stone floor. He struggled to open his eyes. As his closed eyelids opened slightly, the torch that appeared in front of him made his eyes squint. Thirumukamandal of Durga Parmswari gave Darshan in that torch. Goddess! Your mercy is mercy. It seems that you have ended my restless earthly life and taken me to your sunadna in the heavenly world. No, no. This is not heaven. Amon Kaval and Manmalakam. Opposite giving Darshan is the idol of Amon. The Artha Mandapam next to the Garbhagriha where he is lying. A small lamp is humming near the goddess. Its light just made his eyes so tickle. It is still raining outside. The storm is blowing. So much storm and rain could not shake the lamp lit in the Garbhagriha of the Devi temple. Is that a good omen? A sign of Durga Parmswari's mercy towards him? Isn't it like showing that no matter how many big accidents happen, their life will not fade? Jigan Mata's mercy is mercy. All his devotion and all his prayers did not go in vain. The old man staggered and tried to stand up. His body trembled. Is it normal to feel sick and shiver due to standing in the flood for a long time? Amon took the cloth that was hanging to cover the shrine and wiped his body well. He threw off his wet cloth and half clothed himself with the veil. He found the Amon Sunadi stocked with broken coconut lids, fruits, pungal offerings for Nivdana, everything. The priest and the worshippers who came to worship the goddess must have left everything as it was and ran away. Why did they run like that? Did they run away afraid of the storm and the rain? Or did they run after seeing a breach in the bank of the property? Anyway, what he did was good. Durga Parmswari not only saved him from the breaking flood. She waits with offerings to satisfy her hunger. Tonight should be spent in this temple. There will be no better place than this. The breaking flood must flow right next to this small temple. So the temple itself may be in danger. All around the temple there is a flood. Even if it destroys the foundation itself, it will destroy it. However, nothing will happen tonight. Even if it happens like that, it's okay. There is no leaving this temple tonight. There is no body fat, there is no power inside. Reverently Palyavatare approached the shrine of the goddess. He drank enough of the offerings there. He kept the rest securely closed. He lay down in a bowing posture before the goddess. It came around the eyes. Within a short time, the reaper was in deep trouble.